Have you ever seen someone strike a piece of steel against a rock, usually flint, and create a shower of sparks? It's a classic survival technique, a staple in outdoor gear tutorials and, honestly, just looks cool. But what's really going on here? Why do certain metals spark when they're struck? Is it just friction? Or is there something more happening on a chemical or physical level? Let's break it down and uncover the fascinating science behind this fiery reaction right here on History of Simple Things. First, let's define what we're seeing when metal strikes stone and produces sparks. Sparks are tiny, incandescent, meaning glowing hot, particles flying off from the struck material. These glowing specks are actually small bits of metal that have been shaved off and heated up so much that they ignite in the air. Yes, you heard that right. Those sparks are burning bits of metal, not just hot from friction, but literally on fire. This is why they glow so brightly and can ignite tinder to start a fire. Let's look at a classic, flint and steel. Flint is a very hard rock, made mostly of quartz. When you strike it against high carbon steel, it shaves off a small sliver of the metal. But this shaving process doesn't happen gently. The steel is torn away with such force and speed that it heats up instantly, hot enough to reach its ignition temperature. Now, ignition temperature is the point at which a material will spontaneously catch fire in air. For steel, this is around 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit or 800 degrees Celsius. When that tiny piece of steel hits this temperature, it reacts with the oxygen in the air and combusts, forming a spark. Interestingly, the rock itself doesn't produce the spark, the steel does. Flint just acts as the tool to rip off a tiny hot sliver of metal. In fact, you could use other hard rocks besides flint, as long as they're capable of shaving steel in the same way. So why is carbon steel specifically used for this? Why not stainless steel or some other alloy? The answer lies in the composition of the metal. Carbon steel, especially high carbon varieties, are ideal for creating sparks because the carbon content helps the steel become more brittle and thus easier to shave into tiny sparkable fragments. Additionally, carbon can contribute to the flammability of the steel particles when exposed to oxygen at high temperatures. Stainless steel, on the other hand, contains chromium, which makes it more resistant to corrosion and oxidation. That's great for kitchen knives, but terrible for sparking. Chromium tends to form a protective layer on the metal surface that doesn't ignite easily, and the steel itself is tougher to shave off into hot fragments. A common misconception is that this is all about friction. And while friction does play a role in heating things up, it's not the full picture. What really makes the spark is the combination of mechanical force, heat generation, and chemical reaction with oxygen. Think of it like this. You're forcibly tearing a piece of metal off at high speed. That generates intense localized heat. At the same time, this metal is exposed to oxygen in the air. If the temperature is high enough, Combustion kicks in, and that's your spark. It's not the same as rubbing your hands together to get warm. It's more like striking a match, the result of a small, violent, energy-packed event that triggers combustion in the right material. So we know carbon steel sparks. But what about other metals? Metals like titanium, magnesium, and manganese can also produce sparks. In fact, these are often found in ferrocerium rods, the kind of fire starter you might see in survival kits. 
Ferrocerium is a synthetic alloy made with rare earth metals, and when scraped with a hard edge, it throws off bright, hot sparks, hotter and more plentiful than traditional flint and steel. Ferrocerium has a low ignition temperature and is designed to oxidize quickly, which makes it perfect for fire starting. You've probably seen someone drag a knife spine across a ferro rod and produce a spark shower intense enough to light damp tinder. On the other hand, metals like copper or aluminum don't spark easily. That's because their ignition temperatures are higher or they don't oxidize quickly enough under these conditions. Some even form protective oxide layers that prevent combustion. That's why you don't see campers carrying around aluminum rods to start fires. The quality of a spark, its brightness, heat, and how long it lasts depends on several factors. One key factor is the size of the metal piece. If it's too big, it won't get hot enough. If it's too small, it burns out too fast. The speed and force of the strike also matter. A strong hit creates more heat. The type of metal is important too. Metals with more carbon spark better, and metals that oxidize easily ignite more easily. Lastly, Oxygen is needed for the spark to catch fire, so getting the right angle and airflow when striking flint and steel is essential. This is why experienced fire makers angle their strikes a certain way to optimize both the heat and the airflow to maximize spark production. You might also notice sparks in industrial settings like when grinding or cutting metal. Those aren't just pretty visuals. They're often tiny bits of metal oxidizing and burning just like with flint and steel. Grinders can throw off long curling trails of sparks, especially when working with iron or carbon steel. That's a similar process. Material is being abraded off, heating up through friction and oxidizing in air. Different metals even produce differently shaped sparks, and professionals can sometimes identify a metal just by looking at the shape and color of the sparks it produces. This whole concept isn't new. In fact, humans have been using sparks to light fires for tens of thousands of years. Before matches or lighters, flint and steel were the go-to tools for fire making. The method was reliable, reusable, and didn't rely on chemicals or fuel. Even today, it's still used in bushcraft, survivalism, and historical reenactments because of its durability and simplicity. It's kind of amazing that this basic principle Hitting the right rock against the right metal can give you one of the most essential tools for survival, fire. It's not just friction, it's physics, chemistry, and metallurgy all coming together in a single fiery moment. And knowing what's actually happening makes that spark not just beautiful, but brilliant in every sense of the word. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.